Buried is an interactive story. The plot will change based on the choices you make. The story is broken into five chapters. Play straight through or at your own pace. There's no waiting and no pauses. Enjoy and choose wisely. What's cracking peeps? It's Jax here and I'm really excited to play this. It's called Buried and it's an interactive text-based uh, story. And I think I watched a playthrough on this like quite a long time ago and it's got so many different choices and so many different endings and uh, i'm really looking forward to playing it so um so yeah is there any sound i can't remember oh yeah there's definitely sound <laughs> so let's do this i open my eyes and the first thing i want to do is scream i'm flat on my back and everything seems to hurt the trees overhead look familiar it's a clear night sky almost beautiful Except for the fact that this means I've been out cold for at least six hours. But there's something wrong. I don't remember what. But something happened and... My head. My god, my head hurts. And a ringing in my ears. Was there an accident? An explosion, I think. I remember Dennis screaming, but after that, I can't remember. As I sit up, I notice that my hard hat has been thrown off. I look around the area, but it's not here. It feels strange to go anywhere without my hard hat. But I've got to find the other members of the crew. They could be in danger. Uh, so we should either search for the hard hat or forget the hat and search for the crew. I think the fact that it's giving us that means that something will fall on our head and potentially knock us out. So let's search for the hard hat first. I get up on shaky legs and look around for a moment. A few nearby trees look to have splintered and broken at the base recently. They certainly weren't like this earlier. Searching for the hat, for, searching for the hard hat feels normal. It makes me feel like maybe there isn't something wrong here i see it behind a fallen log about 10 feet away from me how is it thrown so far is beyond me driven by nothing more than habit i walk over to it pick it up and place it on my head next i walk over to the center of the log inside and i don't like what i see damn that truck is messed up The logging site looks like a bomb was detonated right in the centre. I don't know where to start. The one load we had managed to stack on a truck for the day is overturned. The trailer bent and the logs hanging off the back. Where the hell is everyone? My head is killing me and it's ringing in my ears. I can't hear anything else. Not birds, not my footsteps, nothing. It makes me wonder if I hit my head after my hard hat flew off. I run through a quick mental checklist to make sure my brain is still working. My name is Roger Hastings. I'm 41 years old. The year is 2017. I own a small logging company and we've been logging in this strip of Kentucky woodland for almost a month now. Okay, so my brain works. That's a relief, but it almost makes me fearful because something is certainly not right here. I look around the logging site. My mind was trying to figure out what had happened. Just about every piece of equipment has been overturned or tilted. Um, look at the truck or look at the debris. I, just, I look around the logging site. I'm trying to figure out what has happened. Um, the truck or the debris? Let's look at the truck because there might be stuff in there like, f that we've been missing. The truck, the hitch is completely broken like it was blown off in an explosion or a really bad accident. Had there been an explosion, all of the fuel on the site would have started a fire but there's no charring, no burning, nothing. I walked through the area where Dennis had been working. From the looks of it, he'd been moving slowly. He'd only taken four trees down today. His metal lunchbox is open and indicated that he had been taking an early break. But he's not here. No one is here. Where the hell is everyone? I could try and make a call on my cell phone, but his battery is already running really low. Not that it matters. The reception is crap out here. Yell out or call someone on the... F he says that the reception is bad. So I'm going to yell because if the reception's... I'm going to try and yell because if the reception's bad, what's the point of calling someone? Just, hey guys! Where is everyone? Tony, Dennis, Frank, Joe. But their names fall flat among the wreckage. I get nothing back other than scaring a few birds away overhead. Might as well start walking and try to find some answers. The highway is almost a mile back through the woods, down the gravel road we used to reach the site. Maybe the crew ran that way for help. But why would they have left me? Were they scared? Out of sorts? Maybe I can catch up to them. 
but with the truck overturned on its side, it looks like I'll, I'll be walking. Oh my god, I can't even remember what I was doing before waking up on my back. Wait, what's that underneath the bulldozer? Oh my god, it's a leg! It has to be either Tony or Dennis. The dozer looks unstable, like it might roll some more. Might not be safe to get too close, but at the same time, I can't just leave him there. Why would you stay back? You've got to help him. You go and look. It's a leg for crying out loud. Hey, I yell. Are you okay? Are you alive? Holding onto my hat, I skip over the wrecked equipment and stray logs to get closer. I can see a bit more of the leg. The jeans are soaked in blood. I recognise the work boots. It's clearly Tony. His leg is bent at an impossible angle, nearly crushed flat. The closer I get, the more apparent it becomes that Tony didn't survive. Okay, if I was in that situation, I mean, would you pull the body out if it, I don't know. Okay, pull it out, pull the body out. I try to pull him out, but he's just not budging. That's when I see the blood coat in the ground under him. It's thick and fresh, so dark on the dirt that it looks black. As I'm tugging, I hear something crunch, but I somehow manage to pull him out. His legs are absolutely crushed and his stomach looks deflated. Blood is covering everything from the navel down. His face was turned to the right when he was crushed. It looks like a broken plastic mask, seeping with blood and bits of shattered skull. My god, I can't believe this. I have to turn away. That's when I hear a deafening creaking noise, and I'm bashed in the head from behind as the bulldozer shifts lower to the ground. I roll clear and end up on my back, my eyes struggling to focus. I'm a little shaken up, but I'm fine. Thank god I was wearing my hard hat. I quickly get up and dust myself off. I can't stay here. I have to find Dennis, Frank and Joe. I have to find out what happened here. Okay, so arguably we made a mistake by trying to get the body out. As I first thought, but I thought we might find something on the body that we could, I don't know, use later. But if I wasn't wearing my hard hat, uh, the bulldozer would have shifted and it bashed my head in, I, I would have potentially... Would the story have just finished there? Would that have been it? Maybe, I don't know. Let's keep going. More logs. As I walk through the stacks of logs from the last week or so of work, everything feels frozen. This high-pitched sound in my ears, it's terrible. It keeps happening every few seconds and sounds like it's coming from far away. I can't help but wonder, is it my ears or is it something else? The silence out here is creepy and there's a smell like the atmosphere after a bad summer storm. I might as well admit I'm a little scared. Everyone is missing and it's dead quiet out here. There doesn't even seem to be a breeze to rustle the leaves and branches. My right knee hurts like hell. My head was hurting so bad before that I never even noticed that pain in my knee. I must have hurt it during the, well, during the what, accident or... Wait, is that Dennis? I see him sitting on the ground, motionless, about 30 feet away. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk straight up to him. That's what, that's what I would do. I would walk up to him. He's just sitting there, not moving. I walk up slowly next to him. Dennis, hey man, can you hear me? I tap him on the shoulder. He looks up at me from the ground, clearly coming to a, out of a daze. Yeah, Roger, I hear you. Dennis is built like a wrestler and there's a tough personality to match. But in this moment, he looks disorientated and even a little anxious. Though I'm glad to see him. The fear on his usually confident face is alarming. What the hell happened? What's going on? So Dennis is American, <laughs> if you can tell. <laughs> um, don't know. The crew is missing or an explosion, I think. We don't know that it was an explosion, so we're going to say the crew is missing. Missing. Where do you think they went? I'm not sure, but it has me pretty freaked out. Something's not right here. Still sitting on the ground, he looks around the, the woods as if he's just now understanding the severity of the situation. The equipment was overturned, the dozers too, I say, shifting my hard hat and wiping my forehead. You okay? Yeah, just shaken up. Me too. This might be the most intimate conversation Dennis and I have ever had. While he and I have always been on good terms, we've never really been particularly close. I've always respected him though. Sure, he comes to work a few times looking like he's been in a bar fight the night before. But I've always seen him do an enthusiastic impression of a dinosaur as he's played with Tony's kids while they waited for their dad to finish up his shift. 
It's then that it hits me. Dennis and Tony were good friends. I'm not sure I want to rattle him with the news of Tony's death right now. Not before we know what's going on. But he has a right to know. Okay. This is interesting. So... If... <sighs> I feel like if we don't mention Tony, it will come out later and he won't he won't like us for that. If we say Tony is dead, he might be angry at whatever happened to him or like if someone was a part of it or something. So, but I think as I say, if I was in that situation, I think you you tell him. I think you do. Tony is dead. You are up front with Tony. Look, it's an important one. Dennis's eyes fixate on me, startled. He was crushed under the dozer. Dennis paused for a moment like he was trying to understand what I said. His eyes narrow and his bottom lip quivers. Shit. And I can tell that he is fighting back tears. He and Tony had been tight, almost like brothers. Hey, he adds quickly, as if trying to escape the reality of Tony's death. Did you see that light? No. What did you see? I don't even know, Roger. It was like this flare of white light. It came right up out of the ground like an explosion. So there was an explosion, I say. Maybe it was some equipment or... This was no equipment. Dennis interrupts, agitated. This huge ball of light came right out of the damn ground. Uh, what did it look like? Or where did it go? I want to ask where it goes. Naturally. It looks like a light. It just shot up into the sky until it was out of sight. When? I'm not sure, but I had finished about ten trees for the day and was about to top one. That's when it happened. You were almost you were al you were almost done with ten trees. Yeah, he says, looking at the ground. You know, I wouldn't want to take the lunch break out until I was done. And that's when the light blew up. Why? You don't believe me? Wait, what? Maybe I misread that. You're almost done with ten trees. I wouldn't want to take a lunch break until I was done. And that's when the light blew up. I think you're... Ex I'm not sure why he would not believe him. He'd finished about ten trees for the day and was about to top one. That's when it happened. You were almost done with ten trees. Maybe ten trees is exaggeratory. I mean, th this is not the time to be like, oh, well, you're not telling me the truth about that, you know. Just say, I, I believe you. I believe you. I mean, there's not any reason to not think so. You believe Dennis's story. He saw what he saw, I think to myself. He has no reason to lie about this. My God, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. But I'm, if I'm being honest, it scared me pretty bad. And if it's all the same to you, I'd like to get the hell out of here. We both stand up and start heading towards the road. It isn't until we start moving that I see Dennis is wounded. His right side is coated in blood, the red seeping through his blue work shirt. There are splatters of it here and there also a very large red splotch that makes me worry are you in a lot of pain and how do you get that injury well we could presume that he would have got the injury from the explosion that he was talking about but I'm curious I'm curious how do you get that injury I'm not sure I must have gotten thrown or hurt somehow from that light. It's then that I noticed that the strange ringing noise is still filling the air. Hey. Oh, hey. <laughs> Do you hear that high-pitched ringing noise every once in a while? Dennis looks scared when I ask him this question and he just nods. I thought it was just me. He looks out of sorts and uncertain. I've never seen him like this before. It's obvious that he's looking for some reassurance. Even though I'm his boss, there's something very unnerving about this. We'll be okay. It's probably nothing. It's freaking me out. Okay. So the game, th that row of sentences is telling you that he needs reassuring. So it kind of wants you to be like, we'll be okay. It's not, It's probably nothing. Because he said he was quite freaked out. If I say it's freaking me out, that's not going to That's not gonna do us any good, is it? So it's probably nothing. Let's be realistic, I tell myself. I might as well try to be empathetic. Out here in the middle of these woods, the ringing could be anything. Maybe a car alarm from through the woods or something. Still, even my passive comment seems to have reassured Dennis. He looks a bit calmer, more relaxed, which is good. We both start moving forward and don't say another word. Did you, uh, did you try and call Frank? I know he had his cell phone on him today. 
Not yet. Luckily, I still have some battery left. I pull up my cell and call Frank. Happy I didn't make that call to Dennis earlier. Decent! It rings, but he doesn't pick up. But then I hear his phone go off behind the stack of logs. Dennis and I give each other a look. As the phone goes to voicemail, I hang up and we walk behind the logs to find Frank's phone on the ground abandoned. We look around for Frank but find nothing, not a single trace. It's then that I notice something really odd, a 10 foot wide hole in the ground right near where the phone was. But there's no stray piles of removed dirt or rocks. It's clean, smoothly dug, cutting into the earth wide, but only a few feet deep. It looks unnatural, like the ground was just deleted. No shovels or diggers used. Dennis walks over to it. This looks like the same kind of hole where I saw that light coming from the ground. I saw nothing. My mind is spinning, but I don't know what to think. We need to get out of here, Dennis mutters. At the moment, that ringing noise carries through the forest again, sending a shiver down my spine. Dennis is right. There's something strange going on, and we might not be safe here. But that ringing sound could be a clue to where the rest of the crew went. Okay, so here's the important question. Do we go further into the st- like the thing, or do we just get out? Do we either get away, or let's check out that sound? I don't know. I genuinely, I'm torn. Let's check out that sound. I think we should check out the sound. Oh, I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I'm going to check out the sound. Oh. Ah! I don't know if that's right. Something's not right. And if there's a mechanical noise like that, you think someone is out here? Maybe. I think we should at least check it out. They, may, they might be able to help. Yeah, you go right ahead, he says with a grin. I'll be here waiting for you. Better hurry, though. Dennis doesn't look like he's in the best shape to be trouncing around the forest. But we need some answers right away, too. I don't want to leave Dennis behind. I don't want to leave him. But maybe... Oh, I'm torn again. I either leave Dennis. If I leave Dennis there, something's going to happen to him, isn't it? But maybe I don't know. Maybe he he'll come back later down the line when his legs better. But why would it be any better? Because he hasn't got anything to heal himself with. I want to leave him there. Okay, I'll go alone. You stay here and try to hang on. I'll try to find someone, anyone. I give Dennis a final look, sensing that this could be a big mistake. (laughs) He's looking at me like he's terrified of me now, making a moan in his throat. I turn away and start moving through the woods quickly. With Dennis all alone, I need to find the crew and get help right away. Every tree out here looks exactly the same. I grew up in the country and can find my way around the forest without much of a problem. But I'm starting to feel a little disorientated. We're never going to find him again. It was a mistake. I'm leaning against a tree when I see something that that has no business being here. Our logging crew has been out of here for three weeks and it seems impossible that we could have missed it. What? What have we missed? What? What is that? Is it a house or something? It's a small building, some sort of mixture of a shack and a bunker. It looks to be made out of concrete, but moss and weeds and plain old erosion also make it look mystical it looks some looks like something out of a demented version of a medieval fantasy movie part of me wants to go back for dennis seeing this eerie building in the middle of nowhere makes me yearn for company it makes me feel like a little kid that is spooked of that old abandoned house at the end of the street plus that ringing noise that happens every once in a while i think it's coming from this building i'm racking my brain trying to remember if i've seen this before but i haven't i'm sure of it it has never been here until now is frank in there or joe They can't be, but then again, they aren't anywhere out here. Looking inside the building is certainly more appealing than walking through the woods for a mile with an aching knee. 
I find that I'm a little scared when I take my first few steps towards the building. The first thing I see is a sturdy metal door closed shut. I'm going to knock on it. Definitely knock. Feeling a bit strange, I rap on the door a few times. It creaks and echoes with a tough metallic sound. After hearing no response, I turn the handle and open it, surprised that I encounter no resistance. The door opens easily even though I hear the clink of a lock. Looking closer, I see that it locks from the outside. Is someone trying to keep somebody from leaving? Stretching out in front of me is a small interior to match the outside. The building is totally empty. There's a concrete floor and dingy featureless walls. There are no windows giving the place an even more isolated feel. Still, I hear that ringing noise coming from somewhere in here. It's louder now, more prominent. The interior seems confining at first, but a small set of concrete steps leads about five feet down, revealing a long corridor. Now, I wish I'd have taken... I knew as soon as I said leave him, it was a mistake. Because now we're on our own. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to save it here, guys. Okay. I'm going to just pause. I really enjoy sort of reading and narrating this sort of text-based adventure game. And I hope you uh, I hope you guys are enjoying it and looking forward to seeing what happens. I definitely think I was doing really well up until I made the decision to leave Dennis behind. That will probably come back to haunt me. And I'm annoyed that I didn't keep him with us which is a shame but anyway there we are that's the decision we've made let me know your thoughts and uh, and yeah look forward to the next one uh, i might play some more right now actually there you go you have to wait till till the next video comes out but thank you guys so much for watching as always i really do appreciate it and if you did like this video in this game hit that like button for me because it really really does help me out if you are new here don't forget to hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell and check out some of the other videos i've got going on Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, have yourselves a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next video.